Now, um, your reading, it, it uh, reminds me of the Aquarius reading. So if you're dealing with an Aquarius, if you have Aquarius, Sun, Moon, or Rising, you might also want to check that out because the energy feels very similar as it pertains to the love portion of your reading at least. So I feel like there's an element of uh, one person being very, very demanding and then the other person feels like they're carrying the weight of that relationship. And they're, um, the other person, wh whoever it is, the, the energies can flow, you know, both ways. But I feel like one person feels like they're, um, they're, their partner is very demanding. Their partner is asking the world of them. And uh, the other person feels, you know, like um, they're bearing the brunt of the relationship. So whichever side of the coin you're on, uh, it would be meaningful if you're dealing with, Aqu with an Aquarius to check that out, okay? So um, the messages that I'm getting um, through both of these spreads for you is um, I feel like, you know, a, a lot of you are um, no longer bound to unhealthy relationships. A lot of you are choosing to release, release control in a situation, release partners, release tension, release conflict, and also to kind of um, let your partner be. That, that's what I'm feeling. Let them get where they need to be before they can be a good relationship partner for you to invest in. And then I'm see, seeing this energy here is if a, if a situation has been so conflictual, if a situation has been so contentious, then you don't want to get involved in it because you know in your hearts of hearts that that's the universe's um, way of telling you that you're barking up the wrong tree, that this isn't the right relationship partner for you, that you're meant for something um, maybe a little bit better, or you're meant for something else that is not so conflictual and contentious and and difficult, okay? So if it's too hard, a lot of the times, you know, uh, Virgos, you pride yourself in your ability to solve problems, your ability to... Um, take care of things, take care of situations, take care of people, and take care of, uh, especially to solve problems when, <clears throat> where other people have given up. For you, there is honor and uh, loyalty in that. For you as well, there is um, a lot of like um, self-satisfaction in that. But at the same time, I feel like a lot of the signs are pointing you towards the fact that um, sometimes if it's too contentious, you know, it, it might not be in alignment with your soul's purpose and it might not be in alignment with your path any longer. And as a result of that, you kind of need to wash your hands of it because, um, holding on to it tightly or even retaining it, I feel like it's going to prove to be a huge burden for you. Okay. Um, what I'm feeling in this relationship here is um, you're at a point where things are going really well for you. And this is um, Aquarius got the same card in the same position, the Nine of Pentacles. This is usually the bachelor, the bachelorette, or somebody that is seen as quite exotic, quite beautiful, quite attractive. And because this is the energy that you bring to the relationship or you bring to, to your environment, this is you having a lot of financial abundance. Things are going really well for yourself. You don't need another person to take care of you. You're very independent. You enjoy your company. You enjoy, you know, walks outside in nature. You enjoy to spend your time uh, with, you know, really embracing your life and loving your life and enjoying what life has to offer. You have friends around you, you have uh, family members, and these are the, the kind of like the core pillars of your world. Work is going well, finances are going well, you know, you have people around you that appreciate you, and you're desirable. Not only that, you're comfortable being in your own skin, you're comfortable with the simple things in life, and so the relationships, yes, it's nice if it's there, if not, you're not going to cry over it. And so this is your energy. And as a result of it, you know, when you least expect it, I feel like that's when relationships come in. So for those of you who are single, I feel like, you know, you, you might be so prosperous and, and, and just so um, 
independent that it, it might be a little bit difficult for other people to approach you but at the same time I feel like you're not you know um, looking for things you're you're out and enjoying your singlehood and you're at a place where you're quite content with the way things are going in your life and I feel like Aquarius got the same energy and the way that your partner love interest is coming into the picture is we have the five of wands this is a conflict card and this is also competition okay um, having people competing for your attention or having or um, a partner that is um, that where a lot of people are competing for their attention and I feel in particular Virgos I feel like a lot of people are competing for your attention a lot of people see what you have to offer what you're bringing to the table someone who's attractive who's exotic who's seen as you know being very financially prosperous as well as independent of course people are going to be fighting amongst themselves in order to get into your good graces and in order to ask you for a date in order to kind of like vie for your attention so i see an element here about having a lot of suitors having people that you know gravitate towards you and I also feel like some people might be doing it in a very, very difficult manner. They might, you know, bring gifts, bring things. They might, like, um, make a lot of promises that they can't realistically deliver. Okay, so that's one option here with this Ten of uh, Wands. And I also feel for others, um, they might like put other people down in order for them to stand out. So that's more of the extreme narcissist and also egocentric types of personality that you're dealing with where they are uh, fighting amongst themselves or they're putting the other contenders, the other suitors down just so they would stand out. And I feel like, you know, you're not uh, you're not stupid. You see through the, the facade. You see what they're doing. And uh, I see an element here of fire signs, okay? So Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo. Um, the really, really alpha male, alpha female types of energy that wants to dominate, that wants to control, that wants to stand out, that wants to, like, win uh, win you and, and, and they see you more as like a possession, a prize rather than something that, you know, like a human being. They, they, they see you as more of like uh, the end goal and they don't really see you as the person that you are as an individual and they might not uh, appreciate everything that you have to offer. Um, if you're dealing with a fire sign who's not like this, then I definitely feel there is conflict, okay? There's um, conflict here about how much time are you giving to me? Are you constantly at work carrying this heavy burden? Um, is the distribution of the investment in the relationship fair? Um, there's a sense of estrangement. I, I feel like they need more attention from you. They need more help. They feel like you're a little bit distracted and they need you to kind of like get your head out of the clouds and really focus on the relationship, um, what they're doing, what they're bringing to the table. And at times, you know, I feel like they're putting in a lot of the work and they need you to chip in. They need you to be emotionally available. So if you're at a distance from them, they're kind of struggling alone and they feel very much alone. And they, they, they feel like even though we're in a relationship, it seems like you're not doing your fair share. It feels like I'm alone carrying this burden and I've got these rain clouds over my head and they're not clearing up. So is there any way that you can reach out and help me? So I, I almost feel like um, they see you as distracted. They see you as frivolous. And these are not characteristics that I normally attribute to Virgos. But I feel like with Virgos, um, it seems as if there might be some type of um, relationship partner that you've had a lot of arguments with. And there's stubbornness, there's pride get, that gets in the way. So you might tell them to do one thing and they're like, no, 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 I'm going to do it my way. And their way is not usually the, the easy or the most, you know, streamlined or the most efficient way because, you know, you're one of the, 
the most efficient signs of the zodiac. You get things done, you have your own system set up, and no one can outcompete you when it comes to productivity, when it comes to, you know, the finding the best practices, finding the shortest route to get like the best optimal outcome. You're very good at it, and you tell them time and time again, you know, you're doing it the hard way, here's a better way, but of course they're not going to listen. So I feel like you're dealing with someone who's got a, a lot of pride who might also have a big ego, who might also just be very stubborn and they want to go about it their own way, okay? And so it has created a lot of conflict in the relationship because of this lack of agreement with the five of wands here. And you're at a point where, you know, they're stubborn, they're going to do their own thing, so I'm not going to give it any mind because if I, if I constantly try to help them and they keep resisting, it's going to drive me nuts and I'm going to become resentful. So I'm going to focus on me. So I feel like you're drawing back your energy. But at the same time, your partner is still drudging on and feeling very isolated, right? So that's what pride does. It isolates you from other people. And then I feel like for others of you who um, are dealing with another person over on this side, we do have the devil, which is uh, somebody engaging in unhealthy habits, unhealthy ways of doing, unhealthy behaviors, as well as the eight of cups here. So I feel like a partner has trying to move on from, you know, their their past patterns, okay? So if there has been a lot of conflict, they're trying to move away from that. They're trying to steer the relationship into more of a positive light. At the same time, if there has been a lot of conflict in one of your relationships and you feel like you're putting in all the work, then I feel like you're going to cut your losses and you're going to try to move on as well. So this Eight of Cups is about a situation that we invested a lot of time, a lot of resources, a lot of love, emotions, energy, um, at the expense of our well-being. It might be something that have lasted, you know, eight months, eight years, um, eight weeks, even two months time, for example. And I feel like you understand the toxicity behind it. You understand that it's a carnal desire type of a relationship. And you also understand that it masks a lot of problems, okay? So, like, the physical attraction is there, the chemistry is there. But what you see on the surface is, is, is not really the reality. And it's a situation that can keep you very stuck. Or it's a way of doing or it's a behavioral trait of the other person that you deem is not very positive. It's not very enriching to your life. And vibrationally speaking... You're at a point where things are going really, really well for yourself. You don't want to be dragged down with other people's problems and drama and um, inadequacies, I feel. So you're, you might be dealing with a partner that you're, that you're going to be walking away from very, very shortly, mainly because you don't want to be dragged down when you're at the space where you're not very tolerant of people and their immaturities. And I also feel like walking away from things before you become too heavily invested. That's just a smart way for you to do things. It takes a really long time for earth signs and especially Virgo and people to fall in love and to, you know, give your all. When you do, you do give your all. But I feel like it does take a long time. Even if you're dating somebody for like, a, you know, a month, you still have that checklist. You know, are they on good behavior every day? Are there new things I'm finding out about them? Do I like everything I'm finding out? Or do I not like most of the things I'm finding out? So that, you know, balance sheet, that checklist, it goes on and on and it happens every day. And then, you know, like because you are so practical and pragmatic when it comes to dating, you have this internal checklist that you're assessing, you're grading somebody by every day. And I feel like, you know, it can be three months into the relationship when it's that honeymoon stage, right? Like the first three months. Um, and the other person might be head over heels in love with you. But I feel like with you guys, you guys are still pragmatic. And, and occasionally you check that, that list. And I feel like you can withdraw and pull back your energy anytime. Anytime. 
whereas the other person might already be head over heels in love with you. And I feel like this is what you're doing. This is like indicative of a very early stage of a relationship where you're still finding out a lot about a person and you're finding out that they're, they might be very stubborn. They might be very fixed in their ways. There might also be a lot of disagreements coming into the relationship as well. And as a result of it, it's easier for you to cut your losses because it's still new. To you, it's not about the honeymoon stage. It's still relatively new. If you cut your losses right now, you would be able to set yourself free. And then I feel like for other people, you're still dealing with someone that you're, you've invested a lot of time in. And this person is so stubborn. It might be a Capricorn. It might be a fire sign, Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo. And I feel like if, it, if there has been conflict... Um, it's going to come to an end, okay? Like they're going to try to resolve issues in their own lives. They have a lot of hangups. They're very fearful of change. They're very fearful of doing things a different way. They're really fearful of relinquishing control and letting somebody else give them advice or even taking somebody else's advice. So I feel like that's their hang up and that's on them and that's something they need to work through. And I feel like you are aware of that. You know your partner well. And so you're going to focus on you. You're going to focus on what you need to do, your own path, and let them kind of deal with this internal term, internal conflict, internal turmoil that they kind of need to sift through and find themselves. And they are going to find themselves. It's going to take some time because they're so stubborn and because they're so like doggedly just... This isn't the smart way to do things, but I'm going to do it because I'm stubborn. I'm going to do it just to test myself. So I feel like you've got somebody here that's um, not as reasonable, but they're hard on themselves as well. And I feel like a big part of you can sympathize with that, right? You're hard on yourself. You understand they're hard on themselves. They want to test themselves. They want to know their limits and their capabilities. And I feel like you can appreciate that. And so you're going to let them be. So you're going to detach yourself a little bit. Um, I see coming back together, but at the same time, I do see arguments as well. So ease up on your partner, okay? Let them deal with their own things. If you tell yourself, I'm just going to focus on me, really take that to heart and focus on you. Don't focus on you and then, you know, have like um, look, look, constantly look over your shoulders to see what they're doing because I feel like, you know, you have to be all out of it or all in it, okay? You can't like, you know, straddle the fence here because then they're going to sense it and they're going to say like, you're backing out on your words or you're backtracking on what you have to say. So I feel that energy, leave your partner alone, let them sort out their things and then they'll come back to you when they're all better. Um, in other areas of your life here, um, I feel like <laughs> this week, it's all stubbornness. And honestly, it is not coming from you. It's coming from people around you. Um, I see you're dealing with someone that you're communicating with. And I see a distance between you and them. Could be a family member. But this person is so, so fearful of change. Okay? Um, the word I'm getting here is somebody who's a pack rat. Somebody that clings on to every little scraps of paper. Every candy wrapper. You know, like um, being a pack rat... It's an emotional response. It's an emotional, um, it's an emotional coping mechanism. So for people that, you know, that hoard, for people that, it, it's not supposed to be rational. Like we look at them and we're just like, what are you doing? But for them, it's an emotional um, coping skill. And a lot of it is they're fearful of change. They're fearful of the times, you know, the changing of the times. The things that I need and the things that I'm used to are not going to be around anymore. The items that I grew up with, they're not going to be produced anymore. So I need to cling on to multiple copies of these things or multiple packages or, you know, whatever it is. It's not supposed to be rational. Some people collect candy wrappers, some plastic bags, some paper bags, whatever it is. I feel like they're hoarding because they feel this innate sense of emotional lack in their own lives. They can be, you know, very financially insecure. And so they cling on to these things that people discard because they feel like if they, if I fill up my house with scraps of things, then I'm wealthy. So it, it, it can be like 
as uh, problematic as that or you know on the other end it's just a coping mechanism for some of these people so I feel like you're dealing with someone who is like that you're also dealing with people who are very very resistant to change they're a very tunnel vision they see things in a very specific way and they refuse to see things outside of their world view and we have here the four of pentacles and this is what led me to say you know hoarding someone who's a pack rat somebody who clings on to situation who's controlling and who is not able to see things from outside of their perspective and I also feel like deeply, um, they, they feel very, very isolated, okay? This is looking for love, looking for love and feeling either rejected, feeling out of sorts, feeling like they don't really fit in, feeling like they don't really belong anywhere. And they're looking in the water and like, what's wrong with me? Do I look okay? Why doesn't anybody like me? So for some of you, you might be dealing with people that have a lot of deep internal emotional issues and you're providing the kind of like the analysis the, the assessment or you're providing some type of a breakthrough therapeutic um, you know type of a some type of a therapeutic breakthrough excuse me for them you're kind of allowing them to lift the veil and to see reality for what it is and to see like you know if you're so like clingy and controlling it's going to be really hard to love you okay and then some people you might notice they feel that control is about love you know I love you so I'm gonna tell you not to do this and do that instead because I want what's best for you we can't really infringe upon other people's free will we can advise them, but we cannot prevent them from doing what it is that their heart desires because it is their path in life. It is their destiny to live to their full potential and exercise their free will. If this is an energy that is manifesting within you where you're trying to control other people and tell them, tell them what to do and kind of like run their lives for them, you need to check yourself. Because I feel like there is going to be, um, you know, the the rebelliousness, okay? So whatever you're hoping to prevent, like, I, I want what's best for you, so you cannot do this, you have to do that. And I feel like over time, it's uh, it's going to create resentment, it's going to create a backlash as well. So you want to be very careful about, you know, not infringing upon other people's um, free will. So I, I see the element here, and I feel like for most of you, you have enough self-awareness to know that, you know, you're not on the giving side of this energy. You're more dealing with those types of people and trying to make sense of it for them or trying to reframe and rephrase things so that they can see their behavior as being quite problematic and, you know, so that they can fix it. So I feel like you're bringing clarity to a situation where there's a lot of fog for the other person. And I also feel there are opportunities here for travel. And this is a little bit more like things that are planned, you know, two months in advance, two weeks in advance. And I feel like they're not like long, long, long term travel, but I feel like there is an, an energy of expansiveness about it. Okay. So this is like the invisible hands around be, working behind the scenes to facilitate travel, to ease travel, or to allow things to kind of culminate and come into the picture for you. And we also have as well, the ace of swords. This is a really good card that signifies like cutting through the BS cutting through the the fog cutting through a situation that has been really really like for whatever reason i'm feeling like somebody is um taking on this victim mentality you know like woe is me nobody loves me nobody cares about me but they have a lot of issues that's uh, disallowing other people to love them to care about them they might have control issues they might be so selfish that they drive away people that they love, for example, and you're providing the clarity. You're not going to say like, you're selfish, that's why people don't love you. But I feel like you're going to be able to soften the blow a little bit, but at the same time, provide them the insight that they need so that they can, you know, really look at themselves in the mirror and make some changes in their own lives. So I feel like this is a week 
of uncomfortable conversations that needs to be had, but you're coming to it with the right intention, I guess. And because of that, you're going to be able to splice through the problem. You're going to be able to provide really good insights, really good assessment, really good um, counsel and, you know, therapeutic breakthroughs for other people. Okay. So good for you, Virgos. Um, I hope the reading is helpful for you. I don't see it being like more than you can bear because this is something that you, I feel like you have a gift for. The relationship sector, on the other hand, I don't feel, I, I feel like it, the, the problems come in from the relationship partner, not so much from your end. You're really focused on your own thing. You're really focused on, you know, yourself, building up your wealth and your work. And I feel like that's where you're really thriving. Okay. 